but in our community and in our world. This stuff is wrong. There's some stuff going on that's just wrong. And somebody said, well, we'll just add positive intention. We'll just speak positive words. Light some candles. <laughs> And I'm not mad at you, because I believe in all of it, and it's place, and it's time. But I can tell you, when you get through burning your sleep, Come on now. and you get through letting it wave into the air, somebody's going to have to get some walking shoes, yeah. and get your signs out, listen yeah. to me, yeah. and get yourself ready to do battle with evil, Come on, to overcome evil Say with that. good. And so, we are in a place of needing to find unity. All for one, one for all. Means finding ways of radical unity and radical inclusivity. So I'm going to with this thought. Unity is the skin we are in. What do I mean by that? Unity is like our skin. Can I just tell you something about your skin? Your skin is the largest organ of your body. It is an organ. It holds all of the functions and organs of your body together while they do their tasks. Your skin is your covering, it's your package. It keeps your individual components and their independent functions moving together as the whole body moves. It's a miracle. The circulatory system can be moving up and down, round and round, and the liver cleansing the blood and the kidneys throwing off waste and the nose smelling and the fingers touching. And then of course there are things like the appendix. We don't know exactly what it's for. There are things in the body that maybe have no apparent purpose. But while the whole body is moving forward toward its destination, they are moving together. Skin has three layers. It has the epidermis, mm -hmm. it has the dermis, am I right? Yes. And it has what is called the subcutaneous fat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> the epidermis is translucent and colorless. Essentially the first part of you is the same as it is on everyone else that is. Yes. It has no color, it allows the light to pass through it like frosted glass does. The epidermis does not contain blood vessels, but it gets its oxygen and nutrients from the deeper layers of the skin. The second layer is called the dermis, where are your blood vessels, your nerves, your hair roots, your sweat glands. And then underneath that is the subcutaneous fat. Now, some of us have a slightly more subcutaneous fat. <laughs> Some of us like people who have a nice amount. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> 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 like comfort, comfort. How am I doing with that? Subcutaneous <laughs> fat lies on the muscles and on the bones, and the whole skin structure is connected together by connecting tissue. Now, it is quite loose. So the skin can move freely. Sure. Multi-layered, multi-dimensional, but it is the skin we are in. If our skin were not in place, we would bleed out. <laughs> All our stuff would fall out on the ground. Amen. And our bodies would fail. Sure. What about skin? Skin community is the first line of defense. Yes. Skin lets you know when something's too cold or too hot. Amen. It is there to warm you, to keep you cool. It has nerves so it registers pain. It sends a signal to your brain and tells your brain somebody stepped on your toe. That's your skin that said somebody just stepped on my toe. Yeah. And it need to get up off my toe. And it's your skin that lets you know it reacts. It reacts to the emotions of fear, True. of joy, and of exhilaration. Yeah. It sweats a little bit. Come on now. Yeah. It knows what to do. It doesn't prefer or cater to any part of the body. 
It covers the face and the feet and the hands and the thighs, the parts we like to expose, and the parts we would rather not, or the parts we would like to expose that we know is not appropriate for us to do. <laughs> In time. Anybody understand? There's another thing I like about it. It shifts and changes as you grow. It replaces itself every seven years. Did you know that? And when it comes back, it looks different. <laughs> some of these other things. <laughs> things that are now loose. <laughs> or once tight. Does anybody remember? <laughs> things that are now down. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know? Yeah. Gravity is not our friend. <laughs> it changes over time. Because it changes every seven years. It faithfully self-perpetuates. It stretches. I'm a birth mother. Come on. Yes. It stretches to accommodate a baby. It's a miracle. Yes. I didn't, couldn't understand to save my life how I got that big carrying a baby. I said, great day in the morning. I can't even sit down. I can't bend in the middle. <laughs> because I had a humongous pregnancy. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. And then when the baby is born, the skin begins the process of returning. Come on back. Yes. With me to, to the place, at least it tries to. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. I am your sister, Kim. Yes. And I need you. Yes. And I am in here for a purpose. Come on. I'm interdependent upon you. I'm not independent. That's overrated. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm not dependent. That's problematic. Mm -hmm. I am interdependent. That's good. You see, without hard won unity, we would spin off in so many directions that we couldn't do anything together. But you pulled this meeting together because somebody got unified with somebody. Yes. Who got unified with somebody? Yes. Somebody respected somebody else's opinion. Somebody didn't have to have all the answers. Somebody didn't have all the money. Come on, here. Somebody didn't have all the power. Yes. But you got together and you made this happen, and it is happened. And now that it's happened, it can't be unhappened. Yes. You have done it because you were unity. So the desire for unity should make us think about how we treat one another. Mm -hmm. Unity makes you pay attention. It makes you pay attention to where the greatest need is in the body. What is stepping on our toe? Mm -hmm. Unity makes us all feel it. Mm -hmm. And then to send help for where the pain really is. Unity is at first colorless and genderless. And then it becomes whatever it is that the divine has fashioned it. I love unity, because in our beginning, that's the way we were. In the creation story, and I love this about the creation story, the Elohim, in God's image, created God them, male and female, which suggested, as the story goes forward, and even the myth-telling of the story, that out of Adam's side came Eve. I said that means that Adam had a whole woman in him. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 Couldn't have done it without. <laughs> I, love it. I love it when I think about it. That when we think of together, we don't have to be in any way separated. Right. Or categorized. And I pushed the envelope a little further and said in the telling of the story of Jesus, we say that Jesus was born of a woman behind the hymen. Come on now. Okay. That she was pregnant behind the hymen, which means that that woman had a whole man living in her. I said, Whoa. I said that there's something about that togetherness. Come on, listen to me. That we have torn things apart and we have put people in camps. 
And we have given people identifications and stories. The truth is, I'm one of those women that will fry your chicken and change your oil in the same week. Do you understand what I'm saying? What do I mean by that? The point is that there is in God no bifurcation. Right. We just are. I just am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like you just are without having to be stuck in any definition. Come on. I'm defined by my who I am-ness. Yes. I like and that, that gives me joy. Like that, like and that means you can be me wherever you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the rest of this? The desire for unity. When we unify like God is unified. When we unify and see all things as one. Then it'll teach us how to treat one another. Mm. Unity makes me pay attention to where the greatest need in the body is. And unity doesn't care if you're black or white or brown, straight or gay or trans, and all of the other things that are in between those empty definitions of who we are. From the city to the rural, everyone matters. Unity keeps us connected, but not with too much rigidity so we can have babies. Come on now. <laughs> it doesn't limit our creativity. Unity has room for new members and new families, and it respects that part of us that has been wisened by experience. What do I want to see in the world, beloved? What is my mind for the world? That God's community will know the freedom and cohesiveness of unity. I can't say it any better than to say, I need to walk with you and you with me. And don't throw anyone out. Amen. No one is expendable. While we are claiming more authority in this moment, there are people that are going to come to you and to us from the Method Baptist Coastal churches. <laughs> and it's an amazing thing about religion and faith. Religion and faith has two principal sins. One is absolutism. The other is authoritarianism. And most of us feel that the path that we have chosen is right. Even when we are trying to be kind, we think that other people need help. So when you get a bunch of Methodists together, they're mad at the Lutherans. And they will have the annual interfaith day of authoritarianism, yeah, yeah, yeah. even yes. when we are kind Come on. and we dismiss mm -hmm. others who so much need our help. Nice. Throw your arms around somebody who completely disagrees with your faith path. Nice. Mm -hmm and find another way to be unified. I don't know what has happened. All I know is something has got to be healed.